It's Erin with Little Urban Farm and we're going to go on a little adventure in Windsor, Vermont and we're going to do a little foraging. We're going to see if we can find any mushrooms. Dad just said he thinks it's probably a little bit too dry but I figured you might as well film this because you just never know. Here's a mullen. I've gotten so I know this one well. I just transplanted one and put it in my yard which most people probably think is crazy mullen? but... I no, I think it's mullen. You can tincture goldenrod for certain things. I have to look up what it is. I'm not real familiar with it, but you can actually do stuff with goldenrod. It's a medicinal. Oh, look at this one here. Yeah, so Hello, beautiful. the house that used to be here, there used to be gardens. And there were like a series of different flowers in there. Yeah, it's a lot of, a lot of goldenrod. They say you have to pick them before they're flowering though because they turn into puffballs. These all turn into puffballs, by the way, and seed everywhere like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just so you know, that's what their seeds look like. Oh, that, this might be a type of bee balm here. A square stem, which means that's part of the mint family. That looks like that's, it looks very similar to my lemon bee balm. Goldenrod is good for the bees. Very good for the bees. <laughs> what kind of vine that was? Uh, with the berries? The red. Those are rose, wild roseberry. They are? So these are, these you can make tea out of, I bet. Wild what? Rose hips. Rose hips? You said wild roses, so that's what's left. Like a rose is a hip. Yeah, I've been wondering what kind of roses to grow to make hips so that I can dry them for teas and stuff. They make one specifically for that. They do? Do you know what it is? No clue. Oh. But the internet is a great resource. Well, of course it is. So this is some sort of a wild rose, and these are the, the rose hips that that's the fruit that a rose actually produces when it sort of dies back. Yeah. What are these things that look like a tail? Yeah. I put this in my hanging pot. I didn't know it was a perennial. The type of horsetail? Horsetail? Yeah. Well, yeah. This one's got green coming out of it, so I didn't know I didn't know they send it up shoots anytime other than the spring. Well the uh, fall is a maybe similar it's been stressed. Rather than die, it says yeah. I gotta get, I gotta oh, yeah, quick, get some daylight. I don't know. Because the fall has the some next to it is definitely now. dead. But That's look at these are all little. These are little ones. So these have been down. sprouting. It's just that whether well, the those weather... are ostrich ferns. That's a different fern. Oh, which ones are the ostrich ferns? The tall, the tall ones. ones. Don't they start small? Yeah, but um, they grow pretty fast. They have a U-shaped stem. So you see how these ones are just round. Well, actually, that one does look like a ostrich fern. That might be a tiny one. See? But the one you pointed at before was not. These? The ones with the darker, thinner stems. Right there. One. Yeah, because these are just dead. That is. It is. Probably what happened is because they mowed them all down or sprayed them, that one's fighting to survive. So to the survive. ostrich fern you identify by the, the U shaped stem. Oh, gotcha. And when the head comes up, it's not fuzzy, though it does have a paper, paper shell or coating on it. It's like papery, but it's not fuzzy because some ferns grow and they're like legit have hairs on them and they're fuzzy. You should come in the spring. We'll harvest fiddleheads. That'd be fun. I was in the, here in the spring last time. That's why I was identifying all the mullein and mugwort and... <laughs> Here's some mushrooms. Yeah. They're tiny. I don't know if they are anything. I probably don't either. <laughs> you sometimes do know. Do you? I'm not gonna pull those through, you know. Oh, cute. Oh, cute. <laughs> what are they? It's the same family as the turkey tail.
so small. You're probably almost stepping on some too because there were some coming out of the log. Oh, yeah. Yeah, these are earlier. They're dead now. Oh, they are? Yeah. Do you need to harvest them when they're more alive to use? It's better when they're more supple because you can chop them up. Yeah, but couldn't you use them as a tincture? Could you tincture well, them? Two tricky tails are white all the way across the bottom oh. with pores. So these are probably not turkey tail unless they're just that color because they're so old. Hard to determine that. Yeah, none of them are pure white, but it might be due to age. Yeah, they definitely look like they've been there a while. Yeah, same family. One of the top three found mushrooms according to the guy that does the turkey tail is or this land. turkey tail oh really so they're common yeah the first three are all this family don't you guys want to try some sumac tea or sumac lemonade or whatever they call it oh this looks pretty old though i don't know i just saw the red ones up high yeah they are maybe they're fine i don't know much about it i don't know when you really harvest it that is a staghorn sumac yeah, you want to cut that one off? Let's cut a couple and we'll, because I want to try this. Yeah, I don't. Okay. Supposedly, they're supposed to, if you taste them, they're supposed to be a little citrusy. Well, these are a little dry for, mm -hmm. for doing that. But if you're making lemonade, you can rehydrate, I would think. Well, that's what I am hoping, yeah. I don't know I, how many we need. I think you can. I don't know either. This is what the leaves of the uh, staghorn sumac look like. Uh, staghorn sumac has these red fuzzy berries. No, this is not the same as a poisonous sumac. It's different. And these berries are used in certain cuisines and you can actually use them to make a tea or a lemonade. Yeah, they're everywhere. I wonder if these have any medicinal purpose. I think they do. Yeah, these probably have some sort of a in the spring, this is very a benefit. I'd have to look it up because I'm not familiar with it. Did you find a treasure? Yeah. A very old treasure. Yeah, some kind of shelf mushroom. It's out of the trimetes. Now, when you're foraging for mushrooms, is there anything specific you look for? Or you really just kind of look at the base and look up the trunk? Just the, the trunk, that look for signs of disease in the trees. Something that gives, Wounds. that it might be dying? Look down at the ground. What about like this one with all the bark stripped off from the woodpeckers? That one might be too far gone, but that's one to look at. You don't want to look at anything that has contact with the dirt, like this right here. Oh, for wood? Oh yeah, there's a little mushroom under there. There's a little guy right there. He's all white. That's the top though. What do you mean that's the top? If he's all white on the bottom, it's probably a true turkey tail. Oh. So flip it over. Usually they have different colors. At the root, they can't. Oh. Well, we no. can, yes we can. We can use my phone. Hold please. It looks all white. And it looks all white on the top too. Yeah, but I thought you said it needed to be all white. All white on the bottom. It is all white on the bottom. The top, they're called a turkey tail because it has different colors of turkey tail. Red, blue, tan, brown. This is also why they call it versicolor. That's Latin, more than one color. You, more, you don't want it to be white. So the bottom yeah. has to be white. The bottom is white. But the top doesn't show other signs of, of being a a turkey, turkey tail? tail oh, colors. I thought you were saying the whole thing needed to be white. <laughs> so the top needs to be colored, the bottom needs to be white. Yes, and they should feel velvety. Yeah, there's some inside, but those look like they might be more... Let me try to burn them. And there's some up here, too. Mm. Gills. 
that go. I'm trying to get it off. Tired of feet. I can't. May not, yeah. Not you got my little hands? No. It's definitely not a turkey tail. No, but. Oh, it's too, like, squishy to. There you go. It got squished a little. Oh, flip it over. It's, yeah, it's ingrained not, into the tree. So. Yeah, it's not a... Uh, no pores? It's not a turkey tail. I'm not sure what variety that is. Yeah, it looks like it's just decomposing. Yeah, that's what they all do. Will it live if I put it back on here? Sure, a horse hoof shelf mushroom. It's a very young one because they get very big. So that was the that was the top of it actually. When I unceremoniously ended that stage of the career. We are still doing a little bit of foraging and we decided to come up onto uh, one of the little mountains of Bass. This is uh, Paradise Park. So we're going into the woods and we're gonna go see if we can find some mushrooms. My grandma Nan was looking for elderberries to make an elderberry pie. And I said, oh, I know where the berries like that grow in a clump. And it went down and down by the pond and around and came back with a whole basket of these things. She was very disappointed. Those are not elderberries. <laughs> yeah. What are they? I don't know what they are. Those might be the ones that grew at the farmhouse. This is jewelry. That was stuff that jumps? Oh, yeah. Oh, wait. They probably uh, gotta be, they gotta oh, be, there it goes. <laughs> they, they gotta be ripe. That one they're, was. There's a big they one. Pop. That one will pop. Watch. See? Oh. They're like spring loaded. Um, what's that one? It looks like little cucumbers or melons. The, the juice of this is good for um, poison ivy. Oh, is it really? Yeah. People. That's where you find them a lot of times in the same areas. <gasps> See, it, it like pops open. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, it unfurls like a yeah. little. Oh, I didn't even see that. They develop tension on the inside and then. It's like oh. a, yeah, it's like a spring. It, it throws the seeds. Okay, it's curly. What are those, Dad? Those little cucumber looking things. Little cucumber looking things. Those, I think, are wild cucumbers. Really? Seriously? Yeah. Are, are they, they edible? edible? No. <laughs> <laughs> we always have the same question. <laughs> are they edible? Are they good for anything? Maybe. I don't know. Like the greener one over there. The greener one? Yeah. Why? I don't know because that one's. Did we bring a you, bag with you us? You can compare the two. I got some bags. Why do you want some samples of those? No, I just wanted to. I don't know. I don't know if she's taking them. No, I was just curious. They might have a, a use. You, we you can look. Knife. We can look them knife up. It. For what? I want to cut it open. Right now? Yeah. Why not? It may not be that interesting, and then we can leave yeah, it behind. Got a little yeah, but it might have medicinal properties. We can the, take it home. The, the seeds, when they're ripe, are black. Those don't really hurt. They're just no. I'm just curious. Oh yeah, they are black. That means they're mature. They're hollow. Yeah, they're hollow. See? Oh wow, those are pretty. They look like bugs, kind of. Yeah, they yeah. do. Should be four, I think. Oh, they're wet. That's why they're so shiny. Yeah. Well, this one's still green. This one, they're less wet than that. There's a little snail on there. Oh, yeah, save the can, snail. He can go to hell. <laughs> okay, then. Little bastards. You know, this is PG-13 here. Oh, see that one? That one's not as mature, believe it or not. Talk yeah, it's greener. The That's seeds why. are like cream colored. Oh, yeah. Oh, there they go. It smells like cucumber. Did you want to save some seeds? No. Oh, no, it looks like a kind of invasive thing. I don't want to bring it home with me. I just want <laughs> to investigate it. Well, there it is. Okay. You got something you can look up and research. I don't know what this stuff is either. I don't really like it that much. That almost looks like privet. It's not not weed. It's not weed. Not weed? Is it? It's not weed. It grows very prevalent all through. Oh, yes, it is. How do you yeah, know? It's not weed. Oh, because it's on the stems. Yeah. yeah, it's got bamboo. Like poke, like pokeberry. It's an invasive species. Dad, what are these? The broadleaf. Like these are, are these curly dock? 
Yes. Okay. There's been a lot of this out here. Some of that was in that um, foraging cookbook I have. Yeah, the Japanese knotweed looks like bamboo. Yeah, it's an invasive species. You can eat the tree. Oh, yeah, look at it. It's all in when here. When it comes up, you can cut it and get it when it's... When However, it's really the bees small. love it. That's why some of the fall flowers are really important, because the bees need food. Well, aren't these glorious mossy trees? Keep your eyes open for mushrooms. There's a mushroom. Oh, you found one. Hey, Dad, she found a mushroom. He's excited. Here he comes. I don't think it's anything too special. The mushroom man is on his way. There's more over there. I thought there were leaves too until I saw this one. Doesn't have gills. This one's different. The polypore. That uh, one was in the ground. This oysters one's... have true gills. No, this is not an oyster, but it's got the same stem. I was going to say it looks like... No, it's not that. That was Different. on the ground. Oh. That's on the tree. Might be jacks, I don't know. No, they're not bright enough for jacks. No, they're not. It is a polypore, though. Different than this, because it's... Like yeah, a... I told you, it's not oh. the same. <laughs> I wanted to... Okay. Oh, it's got a stem. Yeah, I told you it's got the same stem as oysters do, but it's not an oyster. No. Turn it over. Is it in the same field of view? It is the same mushroom. I thought it was different, but it's not. Oh, it is the same? Looks the same to me. Yeah, it's the same. Part of identifying the mushrooms is seeing what kind of gills they have. But this doesn't have gills. This has got polypores. Is that what you call the dead? It the pores. pores. That's why pores. it classifies as a polypore mushroom. Oh, you found one with gills? I did. Oh yeah, that one does have gills. True gills. True gills meaning they don't go down onto the stem, right? No, true gills means that the... Um, Let me see the top. I can't think of the word. Where the seeds come out they come out of the sides of it, and the other ones are undulated. They're not real gills. What are these guys? Hang on, I'll see if I can picture it before you start that filming. Either a crown-tripped coral, or Romeria stricta, Romeria formosa, Romeria... It's a Romeria, it looks like. Google Lens? Google that Lens, up? yeah. Cool. Google Lens is very helpful. Yeah. Those might be turkey tails. I don't know. I'm going to investigate the possibilities. Is that Another, mushroom? there's a big mushroom over there at the end of that. Oh, I see it. First log. That one looks like a balloon. Here. Here, Ralph. Yeah, Doug, come here. There's another one over there, too. You saw another one? Yeah, a different one. And you didn't announce its presence? I just did. You were listening. Totally white. Yeah. I mean, I would call that totally white. Looks like polypores. That one's adorable. I don't know what that one is. Definitely older. That may be a true tricky tail right there. Well, then you should take that as your walking stick. It's too far rotted away. Like I said, maybe you can tincture them. They're very paper thin, huh? Yeah. We'll have to look up if you can tincture them. Yeah. kind of like the ones I used to find at the farmhouse. What did you find? I think it's a bolete. Oh, this one's eaten up a little bit, huh? Yeah. It's polypore. I think it's a bolete. Yes, that's definitely a bolete. Yeah, I don't think I'll focus. 
Yeah, sometimes you they don't. Pull it and turn it upside down to get a picture of the bottom. And you post on the mushroom pages about ID. Easy to miss. There's an orange one up there. Yeah, they're very easy to miss. There's a lot of orange ones. There's one up there, too. I don't know, Dad. I think this is different. Oh, that's turning blue. Oh, interesting. Break the whole thing in half so she can see it. Ready? Or best you can, break a chunk off. Oh, so if it turns blue, no? No. No good. No edible. Sorry, guy. Little veil just get all the way across on it. And it's a polypore of some kind. Well, maybe it did bruise. Did you cut yourself? No. The stem is very crunchy. I don't think it's an edible with that kind of crisp. I'm not sure. You have a picture of the cap? Mm-hmm. Very cool. And you got a picture of the underneath? I did. Well, I've got video. Are you wanting pictures for identification oh, no, in a to. group? Eventually. Is it easier there. if you There's a white one up there, there's a yellow one, up, orangey one up there. She's really good at seeing the mushrooms. There's a beaver down the behind. Wait, up here? Yeah. Oh. Before we get to the lake. Look at that, where they chewed. Uh -oh. Oh, do we have a this one almost looks like a lion's mane, Dad. But it's not, I don't think. Lion's mane is always white. You see? Yeah, that one's pinkish, but this one has gills. Uh, it's definitely different looking. Yes, it is. It's not a coral. It, it might be a very young coral. Oh, maybe. <laughs> but lion's mane looks very much like that when it first comes out. Yeah, it does. But that's very tiny. Can you sign my drink? There's something big up here. That's a big guy. Alright, All right, so we, we think, think that's an old chicken. chicken in the woods. Yeah, if it looked better, we could eat it. That's too old. You want it young? Yeah, it's it way gets too hard. Old. It's, very, it's very hard. Very hard. Cool, though. And the bugs have eaten on the surface of it. Oh, yeah. This is Lake Runnymede, and it is protected, so you are not allowed to swim or boat on it. Although people ice fish on it. Um, and it is protected because of a pond weed. Oh. Some rare pond weed that's endangered. This is where they dammed it up. This little half-assed tail is on the top of the beaver dam. Oh, it is? Yep. Yeah. This is all rodent construction. Rodent construction, yeah, nice. Sign. Oh, so they've, they kept a sign about it. Yeah, that's kind of nice. Okay. Beaver baffles. Take a picture of that. Yeah, it really did dam this up, huh? And they're not blooming now, but these are all water lilies, and they're gorgeous when they're all blooming. We have uh, spider lilies in uh, South Carolina, and every year they bloom. I, I swear I'm going to go see them, and then I haven't loose yet. Strife. That's loose strife? Yeah. And this is a type of milkweed. That's not the orange milkweed at my house. There's different types of milkweed, though. I once saw a lion's mane in a tree. I made Brett climb on my... I bent to knee and he climbed up on my leg and reached in the hole and pulled it out. We ate it and it was good. There were some good ones. We found like lots of mushrooms. Like beavers were naughty here. Oh, is that beaver action too? Yeah, that looks like man made. They tried to cover up the beaver action. It's pretty when these are blooming. Yeah, I bet you. Are these grapes? They look like grape leaves. Wild grapes. Wild grapes. Yeah. Are these edible? Uh, yeah, but there's a big seed in them. Oh, well. That's boring. I think Sarah makes jelly out of them. 
Well, yeah, if you could boil them off the seed, that makes sense. Mm. You can, they're not harmful. I can eat one. See it's a they... bigger soft one, yeah. Oh, they're very tart. They're sour. Oh. Whoa! And then there's a big pit in the middle. We think that this here is, what do you call it, a high bush cranberry? That is beautiful.